Hello, welcome to another video. Uh, this video is again on paginated report, um, a continuation to the video I did part one uh, yesterday on how you can export uh, data out of Power BI using paginated report without using Power Atom Automate. In, in yesterday's video, I will put the link of that video in the description. Um, we had a one customer statement developed and then click of a button, depending on what customers are selected, we exported the data out of that, that uh, paginated report. In this video, we're going to take it to next level. Uh, let's say we have a business question that uh, we run a different kind of a reporting requirement for a customers and they have a different format. Let's say it's a customer statement and uh, certain customers looking for a, a statement in a different format and other customers are looking a report in a, another format and some other are looking in a, in a different format. Now, for a user, it could be very, very challenging depending on what customer, what statement, what look and feel. So what I'm going to do is in this particular video, we are going to run a customized uh, custom statement based on the customer and uh, use the respective pagina report for the customer. To do so, let me show you one small thing, one metadata which I, which we will be maintaining as part of our model and that will drive the whole logic, how, how we will make it happen. So let's look at the data model first, what changes we need to make in the data model and then look into what the final solution will be. So let's look at Power BI report and the data model. So what I did in, in an Excel sheet, again, this is for the demo purpose. This might be stored somewhere else. I have a, a three columns, a report index one, two, three. I'm assuming one as the default. If no customer statement is assigned to a customer, then the default report index one will be used. Again, we can have another column here, uh, which can be uh, called default yes no kind of stuff but let's say assuming uh, I'm assuming report index one is always the default so if we have a hundred customer and we don't have a customized statement assigned to a customer then the default customer statement v1 will be uh, used for that customer so I have a report index one two three and the statement just name of the statement it could be totally different whatever you want you can have a a you know USA customer statement, uh, EU customer statement, or whatever the reason that different format is. So basically, the name of the statement, which we will see in the in the Power BI report, uh, and then the URL for the each. So I create three different paginated report with three different look and feel. And then uh, I given the, the URL, grabbed it from the web URL once the reports are published, and just put it in there. So that's the first part. So it's basically telling uh, what report and the name of the report is and what the URL for the report is and then given a index. This is a unique value. And now I have another tab here. I'm maintaining it here. Again, this could be totally different. What I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, what customer? Again, customer key. You can have the customer name as well, but I kept the key just for the simplicity for the data model perspective. So what I'm saying is, okay, the customer, these customers, uh, customer 11185 will be looking at statement V2. That's the format uh, customer uh, 1185 looking for. These two customers are looking for V3. And uh, intentionally, I did 112772 um, different statements. So he can be either using V2 or V3. Um, there could be a reason that they might need, in certain cases, V2 or V3, which is very less likely. But let's say if that's the case. I want the solution to be very, very dynamic and uh, and uh, av available to uh, work with in all scenarios. So we have like these f f three customers here where we assign the customer statements, what customer statement they will be looking at. But all other customers, because we don't need to define it here, here we are doing what the, uh, you know, where there's a different statement customers are looking. If no customer is giving given here, let's say I have a 2000 customer in my, in my database, I don't want all customer and then give them the statement v1 because that's a default so whatever the customer is not listed here they will by default use uh, report index one uh, as as the default uh, statement so once i done this what i did is i brought these two sheets in power bi and added into the, my data model so let's look at the model so here in power bi what i have our our dim customer which is our a customer um, uh, dimension and uh, then I have a customer statement table so customer statement table is linked on the customer key so 
basically what we're saying is okay this customer um, will be using these statements statement v2 v3 or whatever or multiple statement and then this is one to many because one customer can have many statements and then uh, on this end I have a statement so all the different statements what we have in database where I report index uh, one two three so all the indexes and then again one statement can be used by multiple customers so this is one to many as well so uh, again I did a, a recent a video on uh, many to many and the bridge table uh, I will put the link of that video in here as well um, to check it out uh, how many to many and uh, a, a bridge table works so this is a similar scenario Customer statement is playing a role of a bridge table and one customer has many statement and one statement is used by many customers. So once this is done, so now what we need to do here is uh, we need to write few measures. I already wrote the measures. I will walk through those measures, what those are, and then, then the final output, how, how does this going to work? Uh, so let's look at the measures. First of the foremost is uh, we want a to find out if a customer has a statement assigned to it or not if not then use the default report index one as the default customer statement if a customer statement is aligned uh, assigned then get that url for the statement so that's the first part we're going to do here so what i did is i created a measure called statement url base and i said the default statement index is equal to one so i'm saying okay, i'm storing it in a variable so my report index one is the default so here in this part I'm saying okay, get the statement index so what I'm doing is I'm checking get the minimum statement report index uh, and filter on uh, a, a cross filter to both why we're doing cross filter to both so let me quickly jump back to uh, the model so a customer is filtering customer statement and then because of the one to many and the arrow direction cross filter direction single so customer is filtering customer statement but customer statement is not filtering statement right we need a statement a, the url for the statement which is in this table in statements table so because customer statement table does not filter statement the reason by because we, uh, it's a one to many and cross filter direction is set to single again you we, i can set the cross filter direction to both and that would work but as a best practice you always want to wide cross filter direction to both until as it's really required so what we're seeing is a customer filter the customer statement and then customer statement filter the statement and then we get the minimum index out of here and the report index so that's what we are what we're doing here uh, let's go back to the measure uh, sorry uh, statement URL base so again so this will give me the minimum customer if the customer does not have a statement uh, as we have the we only have the when the user customers has a v2 or v3 statements only then we have the customer in that list otherwise we don't have the customer in the list so this will return a blank so um, what then after that what we're doing is we're seeing if the statement index is blank of course if this returned a blank then use uh, the default uh, which is one as a customer statement so if, if the statement is a blank or the report index is equal to one if, the reason why i'm checking it here in case let's say if i do uh, this here um, let's say another customer one one two five five i say statement v1 so v1 is means report index one because that's what the, uh, the default index is so in both scenarios, I'm, I want to go into this condition. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting the default statement of V1, which is minimum. This gives me the URL and this will give me based on the default statement index, which is one. So it will give me the URL for default statement where report index is equal to one. Uh, if this condition is not met and uh, then what we're doing is we are getting uh, the actual url of the statement in v2 and v3 so let's take a look at how does this look like let me actually create a quick page here and then let's look what this measure will return so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put a customer key from my customer table on it in a visual here and then let's get the base url is the measure which we wrote statement url base create a matrix visual and put the statement on the columns this will this is better here 
So what we're seeing here is actually, let me put the statement as a filter as well. I don't know why this is, a, okay. So as you can see for all the customers, we are getting the statement V1 link because we did not assign, it's automatically taking the default. But if I click on the V2, so only these two customers, 1185 and 11277 is using statement V2. Again, uh, if we go back to our, uh, 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 where we are maintaining. So these two guys, 1185 and 1127, uh, uses the V2 statement and V3 is used by these two guys. So if I select V3 and these two uh, customers are using V3 statement and one customer, as I said, intentionally, uh, 11277 is using V2 and V3. And let's see if we select V2 and V3 here, what happens? So we, we will see the two statement for that customer statement V2 and V3. And uh, so basically, uh, with this statement URL base, we are doing two things. We are getting the statement URL, depending on what statement customer using. If customer does not have a, a, a statement assigned to it, then we are taking the default report index one statement V1 as the default URL. So this is the first part. So we got the another uh, URL. What next, what we're doing after that is we're using this statement URL base and add the parameters to it. Again, uh, how to add the parameters and all that stuff is being explained in the part one of uh, the video. Uh, do check that out. But again, I will show you what I'm doing here. So if I go to statement report URL, what I'm creating here is I'm, uh, I'm taking the statement URL base, checking if it is not blank or uh, sales is not blank. And I don't want to go into too detailed in this. This was more advanced. Uh, I wanted to um, take care of like uh, if it's in a, if, if we are at the customer level or the state level, then only um, we we create the parameters. So what we're doing here is we are getting the list of customers. Again, uh, whatever the customers are select, we are getting all the list of the customers um, which has the sales. And once we have the list of customers, I am I'm creating a parameter again. This part was uh, shown yesterday how we concatenate X. And once I got the list of the customers, all the customers and uh, um, the, within that, which has the sales, and then I'm doing a statement URL base and then up, appending the parameter value to it. Once this is done, now I have a statement report URL. And one other thing I did is I changed the type of this to web URL. And I will tell you the reason behind that is the final output, what is going to happen. This is what the final output is. So if I go to my customer statement page, so what I have here is I have my customer and then I have the what statement they are running. So I have the URL link I can click and then it will run that respective uh, report for that customer. Now I can have, if I say I only want statement V2. So now these are the only customers who are using statement V2. And if I want the customer uses V3 as well. So as we can see, 11277 uses V2 and V3. Uh, Fernando Barnes only uses V3 and Ashley Henderson uses statement V2. Now this is a web URL. On click of this, uh, I'm passing, as you can see on the URL, I'm passing the customer as the uh, parameter to the statement. And that respective statement now get executed. I can add more parameters to it. I can have a date range and all that stuff, which I showed in V1. Uh, in part one of this video. But again, this is just to show is how you can dynamically create the statement and based on the each customer, they have their own statement, um, their own look and feel. Again, I took it to the next level. Uh, the is in scope. The reason why is in scope is being used. Um, so I can have the customer statement with the state. Again, what I'm doing here is let me actually make uh, this a little bit bigger. So again, um, here I am also using uh, the same um, uh, measures to group it by the state as well. So for example, here I'm showing uh, the st uh, state and then the customer underneath. So if I want to run a report for the individual customer, I have the individual customer URL. So Ashley Henderson is using statement two and uh, Charles Jackson is also using statement two. But if I really want to be run for the whole state, I don't need to go to each uh, customer. If I go to the my uh, URL here, 
it is giving me uh, at the state level it is giving me all the customer of that state and then run the report for those uh, a, a customers as well so this becomes very very dynamic so you can run the report based on individual um, a customer uh, whatever the format they want and also at the at the state level if if i want to run all the customer for alberta so instead of uh, running statement for each and every customer i can have uh, so all these customers which are individually there you can run the report for them like as you can see uh, rp dim customer customer is alicia she in this case but if i go to the state level uh, it concatenate all the customers together again it is happening because what we are doing here is uh, we are getting the list of customers uh, within that particular a, a group and and some why we are summarizing it by sales because we don't want all the customers we want only the customer which has the sales uh, maybe the period we select and that it, it only had the few customers so this will only give us the list of the customers uh, who has the sales and uh, and then we are concatenating it um, to to create the parameter again this is the, one of two of my customers are using this heavily and this is very very useful and handy they have a different format for different type of customers and now with this particular um, uh, solution they can run the uh, respective report for their customer instead of uh, uh, you know thinking about do we need to run report one or report two or report three for the customer but then now once this metadata is maintained and it, it is taking care of everything and it is part of the model and it's a model driven and it's a dynamic you change the changes you make the changes in excel file and those automatically uh, flow through into your uh, solution let me know what you guys think about this uh, again this is pagina report i'm very passionate about it um, not much talked about pagina report but uh, i i love to bring it as much as possible anyhow thanks for watching um, do subscribe my channel until next video have a good day thank you bye for now